come with me. Come with me to discover the secrets of how thoughts become things, and we will manifest like never before. Come with me, and we'll discover a secret so powerful that will take you far beyond your dreams. Come with me on an unforgettable journey. Come with me. It's already yours. Get ready for this adventure. And I'm thankful for today that you found us. So get ready. The time is now. I'm Zelda Kelly. Welcome to Secrets Laws of Attraction. Hello everyone and welcome back to Secrets Laws of Attraction. I'm excited today to bring this message to you. Uh, by popular vote, we are talking about money. But before I get started, I want to give you a little disclaimer because it's a pretty day and the kitties are having a good time. So you may hear a little meow or a little bell or something going. And, you know, once again, that's confirmation of the universe that kitties were meowing because of humans. So anyway, they're having a good time and I'm glad and I know that you know I love my kitties just like you love your little fur babies. So without further ado, I'm going to bring you this message about money, but we're going to dig a little deeper than money. We're going to talk about words, sticks and stones, you know, you know the gig. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Boy, oh boy, that guy certainly didn't know what he was talking about, right? So, let's get started. And I, again, want to thank you. We are in December, just a few days before Christmas. I really wish you all the best and really a lot of good cheer and well-being for this Christmas and now, let's talk about the Benjamins. We're going to talk about the bacon, and the beans, and the dough, and the G's, and the lettuce, and the moolah. We're going to talk about the bread and the bucks, the cash and the C-notes, the capital, the cha-ching, the clams, and the dead presidents. Isn't that hilarious? Those are all the slang. And you know, there are about 100 slang words for money. And I don't know who coined this. Get it? Coined? Yeah, okay, Zelda, don't quit your day job. But we've got a lot of different sayings, a lot of different words for money. Yet we take it so seriously. We know that money is something as we say, oh, we need it. We need. Well, God knows you need it. God knows your needs before you need them. So let's talk about the laws of attraction. And you know, somebody came to me, oh, it's been a while ago. And I think they were mad because I was teaching on the subject of money and how we should change our perspective because money is really energy, right? What's behind it? Well, now think about this. When you send money on Venmo and PayPal and Cash App and Chime and whatever else is out there, do you actually see the money? Or is it a number that just kind of magically appears? We're just passing around these numbers. Isn't that something to think about? What's behind it? Now, obviously, it's coming out of your bank account. But think about that. Think about that for a minute. That is energy that someone's sending to you. And this person, it's been a while ago that I think was a little perturbed that I was maybe making even light of money, said, 
Well, you know, money isn't everything. For those of you who feel that way, you're shopping at the wrong place. I'm serious. Because money can be everything. And why do I say that? Because one of the things that you want to do, and when you're asking for money and a blessing and wealth, and to me, wealth beyond measure is not only money, but it is also family and friends, of course your health, and all the good things that we could possibly have here on earth and even more than we ex expect to have. But we pray, we should be praying for really, really deep pockets to help those who really have the need. For those who need a blessing. For those who don't eat today. Don't have that cup of coffee today. It's funny because I want you to know I, I zipped through McDonald's today just to grab a mocha frappe. And you know, I get up to the window and the gentleman says, Oh, that lady ahead of you paid for yours. And you know... It, it is just such a blessing because you, I can tell the continents on my face when someone does that because it is more than a blessing. For me, it certainly is going to be a blessing for her. So in turn, I did the same for one of the people behind me. And I'm sure that one of those people did the same. And that's how you pay it forward. And I'm not saying that because I'm not bragging. I'm saying that if you can afford to do that, that is wonderful. And when I'm saying if you can afford, because I'm going to try to get you off of these mindsets and these words that we are taught. I think all of this started way, 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 way back when. When families didn't have money. They didn't have a lot. They lived off the land. They scraped and they saved for shoes for the winter, for the kids, and that's all they could do. I get that. I get it. But I think someone came up with this because I think it's an excuse and I don't mean to offend anyone by telling the truth. And because it's the truth, I'm just, I guess I have to just take that chance. And I hope you're not offended. But I want to open up the eyes of everyone out there. Many times, not too long ago, I heard, Yes, but Zelda, I need money. I need money. But you know what? Money is not everything. Money is just something that I need to live. Money is something that I, I need to buy my wife this. And money is... And about 15 minutes later, he ended this whole little saga with... Well, you know, that's biblical. I'm like, really? Okay, what is biblical? Well, the <clears throat> money is the root of all evil. Don't you know that? Money is the root of all evil. Well, I'm here to tell you, my darlings, he picked the wrong person <laughs> to, to get into that. So here's the truth. For those of you who have this concept in your mind, and it's conflicting you because you want money, you want to be wealthy, you want to help other people, and we should. We should help the needy. That's what we're here for, to be of service of others. And yet we have been given this mindset, this conflicting mindset of, but no, that's biblical. Well, let's talk about what else is biblical. But that's a different show. <laughs> I'm going to read this to you, and it's from the King James. The reason I read from the King James is the closest translation 
to the manuscripts. The manuscripts scripts were written in Greek, Hebrew, and in the Chaldee or Aramaic. These were translated in 1611 by King James the first. King James made sure he had translators and transcribers of all languages there. This was a huge task, and the reason that he did this, because back then, only the elite were given Bibles. And those who were not in that elite category could not get a Bible. They were taught by clergy, and they only had that to go by. They, did, they didn't have anything else to go by. So King James, and one of the good things that he did, was say, look, this, this is for, for all. This is the word of God. It's for all people. So in 1611, he got together these people. Gentlemen, transcribers, translators of all walks of life and all languages, and they went through the manuscripts. And from what I understand, it was a very daunting task because, like the English language and many other languages, there are some translations of words that can go in either direction, and they really had to decipher what the word meant. Now, in the beginning of the 1611 Bible, King James writes, look, we've translated this to the best of our ability. But remember, the translation is from man, and you have to pray, basically, I'm paraphrasing now, you have to pray to make sure that you come to your own satisfactory conclusion of what this means. For those of you who are really interested, the 1611 Bible is still in print. And if you want to contact me, I can tell you where you can get a copy. Relatively, well, it's not expensive, but, you know. And for those of you who really want to read more on the subject, there's an excellent book called God's Secretaries, and it tells all about that, and you're going to love that if you'll take the time to read it, because, you know, we should be studying this. God, our source, our resource, gives us this love letter. He gives us a direction of what we are supposed to be doing in life, and yet we just, well, tra-la-la. We might hear it on Sunday, tra-la-la, and we should be digging in deep to understand how our minds are made. It's very, very important. And for those of you who say, well, you know, Zelda, I did that in my best accent. Did you like that? Hello, Zelda. I cannot get past the these and the thous and the doth and the them and the thou and this and that and the other thing. Did they talk like that back then? No, they did not. They spoke in the dialect of what, where they were. All of those words, the these and the thous, came from the Old English, and that was the 1611 Bible. That's, that's during the translation. All I can say is, look, pray about it. Work through it. Don't skim through it. Work through it. God will be there. He is the resource. When you ask him for help, he's there. He will open that door. He is the one who created the laws of attraction, the law of manifestation, the law of gravity. Now look, you trust him in the law of gravity, right? You don't wake up every day and say, Oh my gosh, am I going to fall off this earth or float into the cosmic unknown? No, you don't do that. You trust that the gravity is there. And you know what? Really, no one... It, it can be explained scientifically, but when you start thinking about this... It really does, is a lot for your mind to wrap around. How we just don't float off into the 
cosmic unknown. So we trust God. We trust him as a resource and as a source. And he tells us all of these things that you're learning about relationship and money and attraction and manifestation, the laws of of everything that is earth that we pay attention to. But there's also that law of an involuntary law. Those laws are your heart beats involuntary in the huh, I can't even talk. <laughs> involuntarily. Your fingernails grow involuntarily. You don't sit there every day and say you know what, fingernail, you need to grow, and I need this by Sunday night because I've got a date. No, actually, you just go get your nails done. And it's the same kind of cheat little cheat thing we do with vision boards and the laws of attraction, and we do with the 369 uh, manifestation, and we do with the water manifestation, and this and that and the other thing, and we're going to start getting into those. Those things are wonderful, but let's get back to the subject of hand. So I'm about to read you this translation of the King James Version of the, the money is the root of all evil. Now, I know for some of you, well, that's what my grandpa said, or that's what my grandma said. Well, that's what they said. God bless them. But let's ask what God has said about this. Let's get into the source. Let's tell him, let's, let's find out what he tells us. And it reads, and this is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now I'm going to stop right there. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, that means while some eat, breathe, drink, sleep, money, they have erred, mean they have committed an error, they have erred from the faith, they have walked away from the faith, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. That means they brought on their own trouble. So what this is telling you is if you have a love of money and you kind of walk away from that walk in faith that you have of God, our source, our resource, our creator, then whatever comes your way is your own doing. That means if you get pierced through themselves, if things come through and they hurt, you lose money, you lose relationships, you lose your material things, you cannot blame God if you have a love of money. Now, I'm going to tell you, I don't think anyone who is listening to this today has a love for money to that regard. You don't worship money. That's what it's saying. But here's something that's really interesting. Because the book of Timothy is in, was in Greek manuscript. And where it says, They have erred from the faith. Now let me take this one step further and give you the Greek translation of that. those words. Have erred that is spelled E-R-R-E-D, like in air, you have, you've caused an error. In the Greek, that means were seduced. Let's read it that way. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which some coveted after. They have been seduced from the faith pierced themselves through with many sorrows. You brought it on yourself. I don't know about you, but I certainly do not want to be seduced by money. And many are, and we have heard of that through history, how many are seduced by money. So let's hope that that clears that up, because I do believe those mistranslations can form 
our new ways of thinking of how things are supposed to be. And it's not supposed to be that way. How many times have you heard when you're growing up or even now, wow, that guy is as rich as Rockefeller. Who do you think I am? Rockefeller? Or there goes Daddy Warbucks. There he goes. There goes there goes Mr. Got Rocks. How about, well, money doesn't grow on trees. I like, I'm broke and I can't pay. Now look, I've said these things and I had to learn the hard way. And I don't want you to learn the hard way. So I'm thankful that you're allowing me to bring you this message. So what does this mean? Okay, Zelda. Okay, okay. So now we understand where a lot of this is coming from. And again, I believe it is an excuse for people to remain broke. I don't know why it is a mindset to feel that those who really teach the Word of God, now listen what I'm saying, for those who really teach the Word of God, if you are in the clergy or if you teach the Word, now you're supposed to stay broke. Why? Why? Jesus didn't say that, neither did God. Why are you supposed to be broke to teach? Now, I'm also going to say this. You, you, you better have your wits about you if you're going to be teaching the Word and you're going to be thinking about how things are going for you. Because it, if your ministry makes a little bit of money, you just may be tempted. So you got to be careful, okay? But i got to say this. I truly do not believe that a minister or a pastor should be broke to teach the Word of God. Those who are truly teaching the Word, why? 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 That is one of the most important things, important jobs in our lifetime, is teaching the true Word. So why do we want to keep that person broke? And then we wonder why we are having problems. I want you to think about these things. Now, how many times have you seen, and I'm just going to, let's, I, I, I'm not going to get in there. We're not going to mention anybody's names. We're not going to do that because that's not what this is all about. But how many times have you seen some of the pastors that may be on TV and you see that they live and they're very well off? Okay, that should not be your problem. That's theirs if they got the funds in a wrong way. But if their congregation wants to keep them in a very good living arrangement and they agree to it, then why is it anyone else's business? If you don't agree to that, then don't give to that ministry. There, cut and dry, enough said, right? Because when we start judging others, what does that do? That forms that mindset in our subconscious, back there in that reticular activating system where we set that intent. Well, darn it, I don't want that person to be wealthy because he doesn't deserve it. So what if you had somebody around you? What if you had somebody around you that you were manifesting and working on your affirmations and then all of a sudden you hear that somebody says about you, well, you don't deserve it. Really? That's why it's so important to keep this as a project you, to not tell anyone unless they are like-minded like you are. If you are in a group, and that's really a good thing to do, quite frankly. If you're in a group that you're 
working on manifestations and af- affirmations to bring in your attracted goal, then you should be gravitating to those people. You always, always should be hanging around those people who are not in a desperate situation. And that brings me to a story that I wanted to tell that I actually shared with a friend last night. I like to go to the casino. Now, I can control myself, and I win. Not always, but for the most part, I win. I learned a long time ago that if you go into a casino... Now, first of all, here's a disclaimer. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not telling you to go in there and that's going to be your source or your resource. I'm just merely telling you a story. I like to do it for the entertainment and I also like to do it because I love to watch the people. And there's a lot of good energy there. Okay, so when I lived in Tennessee, I would go to Harris Cherokee Casino in North Carolina on their reservation, and it was very, very beautiful. And I was very blessed with my winnings. A group of us gals would go over, and we would go probably once a week, if not a little bit more. At that time when I was going a lot, they had a daycare in Harris. (laughs) And my son would go to the daycare, and you could spend five dollars I'm sorry, five hours, and it was $5 an hour. And he had an absolute blast. wasn't like he was crying and behind a cage and whatever. He had a blast. They had games, and they had someone there that played with him. Oh, my goodness. He would just be so happy. So I had five hours to make bank, to make my cool ones, to make the bacon, and to to make those beans and bread that I had to take home. So there were a lot of gal. I was at that time in the mortgage business as well. There were some real estate ladies. There were a couple of other people that would we would just all gather up and go. It was an, only an hour. We would love it. Now, this one lady, we loved her. She was fantastic. She was fantastic at her work, fantastic But the moment that she got in the car, she would be crying. Oh, gosh. I love to go with you guys, but you know, I just, oh, I shouldn't take the money to go. Oh, my gosh. How am I going to pay my car insurance? I I just know I'm going to get over here and blow everything that I've got. And, you know, I had to sneak this from my husband because if he found out that I took this money to go down there, oh, my goodness. Now, Friends, this would be the whole bloody trip. We couldn't get a word in edgewise. And we would sit there and say, oh, that's okay. Listen, you're going to win this time. And we would all try to encourage her. But we also would try to just say, hey, (laughs) can you be a little quiet there? You know, because that will drain you of this real positive energy. Imagine you've been around that where you're all psyched up and ready to go. And then you have a Debbie Downer come in. Well, this would go on for an hour, an hour, an hour. We could up, and I always had my car valet parked. So we would pull up and get out of the valet. We would all have big smiles on her face, and we would look at her, and oh boy. It, it was very treacherous and very hard to be around. And we would walk in the front door, and as soon as she walked in the front door, she grabbed the cash that she had out of her handbag. She'd hold it up in the air, and she would say, you may as well take it now. I'm here to make my donation. I'm here. Here. I just may as well throw it all now, because that's what's good it's going to do. And let the games begin. Well, at this point, None of us would really even want to be around her because she would sit at a machine and she would just shake to put a $20 bill in there. (laughs) To think of it now, oh my Lord. And so she would shake and she would hit the first button 
and she would say, oh, I bet, I bet too much on that one. Oh, nuts. Here, I need to lower my bet. I need to really push the, oh my, and she would just be going on and on. And finally, any of us that would be sitting near her would get up and move away, and we would just kind of look each other. And then she would be sitting there in the row of machines all by herself, and the next thing you know, within probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes of us being there, she would come find us crying. Oh my gosh, I'm broke. I blew all my money thinking that I was going to, and I knew I wasn't going to. I just knew it. So I went to the ATM and I got more and I blew that. And now my husband, I bet you he's going to divorce me when I get home. Now I'm going to tell you what, this went on for quite some time, weeks, in two months. And while the rest of us were winning, she was going home broke. And then on the way home, it would be, Oh my gosh, you guys win. I should be hanging around you guys more. Oh my gosh, you guys are so lucky. What am I going to do? And it would almost make you feel guilty. So this one time when we dropped her off and said our goodbyes, I basically turned to these other ladies and I said, Look, I love her, but I don't know about you, but if she gets invited the next time, I'm not going. If you guys want to go with her, that's all well and good. I'm not going. And we all agreed to not invite her again. Several reasons behind that. It was her mindset. It, it really drugged the rest of us down that would go and expected to win. You see, you have to expect to win. You can't have this little thing gnawing in the back of your head and you cannot take the rent money and your food money to go. Now, I'm going to tell you that right now. This is entertainment. And if you set aside some entertainment money, then okay. Let her rip, tater chip. <laughs> but be responsible and walk out with the Benjamins. So, <clears throat> I'm telling you now all of this. Because what I want you to understand when it comes to money is that there's a space between your conscious and your subconscious mind and that space is that filter you can call it the reticular activating system if you want to but there's that space it's like a void kind of it's like a drift kind of but it's that space where all of those things get filtered into your subconscious will move through that void and drift and then go into your conscious mind and that's how you get led into things you can't get this money is the root of all evil mindset and expect to bring in any type of funds I will tell you, do not waste your time. It will not happen. Now, what about these times when you do need? You do have a need. I can tell you, if you manifest it correctly, there will be those who come to your rescue. And I've had that, I've had that happen to me. And when that happens, you make sure that you're grateful you make sure that you respect them and you make sure that you ask for a particular blessing for them. And then when you are able and capable, you make sure you take care of that person and pay them back as quickly as possible and then some because you will be blessed. You're going to hear another thing. It is better to give than to receive. Oh, yes. And you know, that's made a lot of us really not good receivers because it is very hard. We love to give, but it is very hard for us to, to receive. And I'm going to tell you what you do if someone gives you a money gift or a loan and it's very hard for you to receive it or you refuse or you make a big deal of it or you, whatever the case may be, is that you're messing up that other person's blessing. It's called the law 
Okay, here we go. The law of reciprocity. That means when you give in with a good heart, God pays you back ten times. Now, I'm also going to say this. Don't be going out to give to get. Because that's not how it works. You cannot do that. It will not work. And then you'll end up with zero in your hands and think, well, gee whiz, I gave there. Okay, Zelda said. No, Zelda didn't say. I'm telling you that if you give to someone and they receive it and you have to receive it with a good heart because you know what? That other person receives that blessing who gave it to you. Now, okay, they may not be blessed with money, but they may be blessed with opportunity. They may be blessed with other things. And that also brings me to this. While you are manifesting whatever amount of money that you want, and believe me, I have manifested thousands And we'll get into that one in another episode. But when sometimes you'll manifest that opportunity to save a little money. As an example, you may have someone call you up and say, you know what, we want to go out tonight. We want to go to a movie and it is our treat. Now what are you going to say? No, no. I'm embarrassed because I can't pay. Well, they're not talking about that, so don't bring that up. If someone calls you and they say, I want you to go with me and it's my treat, it's not because they feel sorry for you or they think that you're broke or they think that you are a loser. Maybe they just love to have your company. Did you ever think of that? (laughs) Did you ever think that they would just love to be with your company and see you happy and do something for you. So don't lose that mindset when you are manifesting and when you are attracting. Okay, so Zelda, get to the point now, right? Here's what we do. We have to write down a list. This is number one of all the words that we no longer use. And I'll tell you why. Your brain, this computer, your brain, that brain computer that has that space in between your conscious, your reticular activating system, and your subconscious, does not know the difference whether it is good or bad. So if you are affirming something and you are attracting and you are manifesting and you use these wrong words, if you are expecting the the universe or even your mind to discern, oh, well, no, that's not what I meant. Well, you better get with the program. And no pun intended. Think about this. I'm sitting here and looking right at my laptop, and I've got my phone in front of me. I've got another laptop to the side. They have no feelings, and neither does money. There is no emotion. Zero. You're dealing with an inanimate object. So what you put into that computer when you upload a program or when you go on to Facebook or when you go into some other social media, your computer doesn't look at you and say, now hold on a minute, did you really want to go to Instagram or would you rather go to Facebook? It does not have the ability to make that decision for you. So you have to think that is how your mind works. That is how this law of attraction works. It does not have the ability to discern. Think of the laws of gravity. Does the law of gravity have the ability to discern whether you are sticking to the earth or a car? There's no discernment. It's all. It is all. 
It's the same thing now with money. There is no discernment. You either get it or you don't. Now, sometimes it will take longer than you expect. And I'm going to say that I myself have been in those situations where it takes longer than you expect. You have to understand that if there are others involved, if there are companies involved or there is something else involved, then it may take longer because you're dealing with other people's free will. Get it? Get it? So if you are asking for money for from a particular source, if you say, well, you know what? I want to be rich, so I'm going to go win the lottery. You may be waiting a while because you've just told the universe and God the source you want it to come from. If you say that or you say, well, I'm going to go to the, com- I'm going to go to the casino and I'm going to win this amount of money, then you've limited yourself. You actually have tied the hands of God and you have limited your resources through the universe. That is very expensive lesson to learn. So what do we do? When we're manifesting money, the best thing to do is write it down. I have XYZ money. That's what you write. I have, be specific, if you need $2,500, I have $2,500 in my bank. You don't say, I have $2,500 and it's going to show up from Uncle Ross who's going to talk to my ex-mother-in-law who's going to tell me through my ex-brother-in-law who's going to tell my ex-mother-in-law. Good grief. How can the universe keep up with you? Because you feel that you have to manipulate it because you cannot fathom that there is something out there it's going to make this happen and you're going to have to clear that block and when you clear that block money comes easily and you will become a money magnet so you write it down that's what you do you write it down it works you speak this into an existence i have $2500 today i have $2500 Someone, something has found value in me. I have $2,500. I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. I have $2,500 or whatever the case may be. The words you do not want to use, and this is what you write down, because you're going to have to start going over your notes. You just, you can't wing this. And I think this is why a lot of you, and I've been there, have gotten frustrated and it's because we just think, well, we, okay, well, I've heard that once. I've heard Zelda. Okay, so now. Now what? Now, 15 minutes from now, you're going to be using these words that you should not be using. Remember, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Ha ha does not know about the laws of attraction. How many times, I'm going to say this, side trip here, how many times have you heard someone that was abused that said, I would rather be beat up than have someone talk to me the way that that person did? Because it is very hard to recover from words especially when you care from some, for someone. It's extremely hard to put that out of your mindset. Okay, so here we go. Here are the words. I need... I hope you're writing this down. I need... I want... I'm broke... Maybe... I hope... I wish, I sure hope so, I can't, 
someday won't. Here's a big one. I'm trying. You're going to have to replace those words in your category if you're wanting money. If you are manifesting money. I'm saying wanting because I'm trying to get this through to you. If you are attesting, affirming, attracting, and manifesting, those words will no longer be in your vocabulary and will no longer work because you may as well just click the off button right now and you may as well just say, oh, well, well. I am happy to live my life the way it is. You're going to have to get off of this mindset of money is the root of all evil. I I don't need a lot of money, but I I, I need money, but I just I don't want to be rich. That's one of my favorites. I need money, but I don't want to be rich. Why not? Gee whiz, think of all the people you could help. Why not? Somebody down the road needs their car fixed. You could just pony right up and say, there you go. Don't worry about paying me back. Pay it forward. Use your car to give other people rides. My goodness, why wouldn't you? I'll tell you why we wouldn't. Because we have this mindset that if you're rich, you're evil. Rich equals evil. No, it does not stop it. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> stop it now. I'll tell you this. The moment that you become in service of others and you get off this mindset and you start getting rid of these words and you start, you really, really now are into it. I know this is coming. It's called gnosis. It's the ability, it's the law of knowing. It's called gnosis. I know. I know deep down inside. And don't give me a hard time out there, my darlings, because I love you. And I'm going to tell you this. You certainly use that when you want to predict a negative situation that's coming. I have to ask you, why is it that you know all the negative, but yet all the positive, you're just out there floating in the cosmic unknown like there's no gravity, and you don't know nothing? How many times... Have you called, or someone has called me and said, Oh, I just know this guy isn't going to come back. Well, I just know that was going to happen. See, that was bad, and I just knew it. Well, why can't you say, This money came in, and I just knew it? Why can't you say, This money arrived, and it is a total blessing, and now I get to bless somebody else. Even if you take 10 bucks of it, right? 10 bucks. Even if you take 10 bucks of it and give it to somebody else, that might make somebody's day. So why wouldn't you want to be rich? Sure. Now, there is a time when enough is enough. And you'll know that. But don't declare what you don't want before you have it, because you won't get it. If you say an open statement like, well, I just don't want to be rich, well, the universe looks down at you and says, well, your wish is my command, because we had a much bigger plan for you. And if that's what, if you just really don't want it, that's okay, because somebody else can use it. You have to start thinking about what you're saying, about what you're doing. The thing behind it is the action. It is that knowing. It's the gnosis. It is that knowing beyond the, um, um, the most powerful belief that you could possibly know. You know it's coming. Those people who win the lottery know they're going to win. It's a matter of time. And yet, we always have our hands up. But when am I going to win the lottery, Zelda? I don't know. I don't think you are. 
Well, gee whiz, thanks. No, it's because you have to have the right mindset going forward. This is something that you can actually manifest winning the lottery, and many do. If that's your gig. But why don't you really put that wonderful thing out there that says, that wonderful thing being that affirmation and that statement where you are affirming and you are attracting your funds and saying, I just know I'm going to have that $2,500 in my bank account. Now, I've ma- manifested $25,000, not this year, but last year. And it took about two weeks. And I actually did a water method, and we're going to go over that one in maybe our next podcast. But I did a water method with that, and I spoke it out. I will, and that, it came in to the penny. I will have $25,000. I will have $25,000, and I want you to know at that time, I had absolutely, absolutely no clue where it would come from. So believe me, it felt very good to believe that it was going to come from somewhere because I knew that if I believed That sets that frequency in motion. Here you go. It's that vibration, that frequency that you send out into the universe, and that makes you a magnet. So I used the water method within two weeks. I think it was 10 days. I had a client in my other business call me. And said, you know, Zell, I, um, and this this was like January 13th, and it was the, he said, you know, about a week and a half ago, he said, I had this unexpected closing of this transaction. And he said, I know that you worked so hard, you and your team worked so hard, and I have had this on my heart. And I'm sorry that it took me a little while to call, but about two weeks to ten days ago, it all of a sudden just popped into my brain. And it took me a little bit to find you, but here I am. And I said, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for thinking of me. And he said, that's fine. Where would you like me to send it? And I told him. And he said, well, I really appreciate you. You are such a hard worker. You have brought value to me. And he had stated to me all these statements that I stated. And I'm going to tell you, even me, yes, I, stood there kind of paralyzed thinking, holy moly, I spoke these things. I bring value to my clients. I am the one. I am the one who is worth what I am paid plus more. And everything of those statements he was saying to me. And then I really didn't want to ask him. (laughs) Because you just don't know. You don't know, oh, well, okay, it could be 10 bucks. It could be whatever. A couple of Benjamins. It could have been whatever. And he said, by the way, I'm sending you enough that if you have someone else that worked alongside of you, that you could both benefit from this. Now, once again, there's those words. I am a benefit to my clients. I bring value. So he was spitting all this out, and these were the words that I spoke. Now, this is probably one of the best examples that I can give you because at that time, I just knew it was going to happen. I just didn't know how, but it didn't matter because the how is not your business and it's not mine either. It is none of your business how it comes about. So stop being a busybody. (laughs) Stop it. 
<laughs> I hope you're giggling because if you know me, you know I love you and I'm not getting on you. So finally, because I didn't want for him to feel that I was ungrateful. And I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to ask how much this is? And finally he said, look, I just want you to know that I am a continued client of yours. And this $25,000 that I'm sending you tomorrow when the banks open will show you how much I appreciate you. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I had to go in the living room and sit down. And you can believe thankfulness, tears of joy, gratefulness. And yes, I did split that with someone else that I was able to be a blessing for. That's what it's about. I could have been greedy and said, oh no, well, I'm going to 25 smackaroonies. I'm going to keep that for myself. I'm not sitting here and bragging, but you'll know when you get into this, it's, it's not a brag. It's about having that money responsibility. So when you're in that mindset, my dear loves, you're not going to be in that mindset of, oh, I love money so much. I'm going to let it seduce me. No, you're going to bring it in. Write it down. Think of it. Know of it. Get rid of those words. Throw those things out the window. You don't need it. Be strong. Stand up. Have courage. Be brave. When you have something come to you that is a money issue and it throws you off guard, you stand in front of that and you say, that's fine. You will be taken care of. And then you start. And then you write it down and you say, this is how much I need. I need there. Get it? Get it? Did you catch me? This is how much I believe I know will come in. So remember, take that need, the want, the if I'm trying out of your vocabulary. There's, there's no room for that. You can't be a hothouse lily. You can't fall away. You can't be a wuss. <laughs> you just can't. You have to be strong. You have to know what you're doing because when you know it works. When you go out to your car to get into the drive to work in the morning, you know when you turn that key in the door, that is your car. You might be paying the bank for it, but it's your car. You know you know. You know you're driving to work. You know. You know. So when you are driving to work, I want you paying attention to the road and also saying, I know that Source is sending me money. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I'll have more than enough. Most of you, and this is the last little statement, and boy, this time has flown by, but I really hope you have learned because through my mistakes, I really hope that I'm able to share with you. And you may have to listen to this a couple of times. Don't fall into those traps of we don't see our way out of things, so we're just going to make an excuse and say the money is the root of all evil or money doesn't grow on trees or who do you think I am, Rockefeller? You're not going to fall into that. I like this one. It's just as easy to fall in love with a rich man as it is a poor one. <laughs> we come up with these things to make excuses for our lack. Okay, a lot of us, a lot of you have debt. So what? You can climb out of it. I know people who do not have jobs who are able to make a living. And I'm going to leave you with this. My grandmother, the card reader, never had a job. 
Now, granted, she was a housewife and a mother, and that is a job. But I'm saying outside employment, where she would get up in the morning, go to work, and she was very wealthy. And I'm going to tell you, she never stole from anyone. She never did anything from anyone. But I would be, I'm going to tell you, I would be at her house and she would go get the mail and somebody would send her a check. Oh, here you go. I'm so happy that you gave me the color of those drapes that you put in. No kidding. I would just be amazed. And when my grandmother passed away, she was wealthy. She knew, and she passed it down the best she could. And I'm going to tell you, I have, I have fallen in those traps of getting scared. Oh my gosh. But you know, when somebody comes to your rescue, and they have, and if you're listening, thank you out there. Because not you will be blessed, you are blessed. You are a blessing and a blessing is getting ready to chase you down. When you start thinking that positive, wonderful affirmation, it will happen. So don't forget, my, dollar, my darlings, my loves, write it down because you deserve to be wealthy. Don't give to get. But remember, God blesses those who are in service of Him. And when you have money, you can't help but give. Come on now. You don't fall into that trap of money is the root of all evil. Oh, hogwash, you do not. I know you. You would not be listening to this if that were the case. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you can call me Zelda Colombo, right? One more thing, and this came to me, and I have to share it. And I've shared this in one of my other podcasts. When Solomon was about to be king, now Solomon was the son of King David. King David was getting old. He was going to pass the, the, the throne over to Solomon. Solomon went to God and he said, God, here I am. And God said, what is it that you want from me? Now I'm paraphrasing now, come on. Let's not be a purist and hold me to all that. But I'm sharing this because I want you to understand the level that they were on. So Solomon went to God and said, I'm going to try to be the best. You know, God, I, my concern is the help that I need from you is that I want to be the best judge the best king of Israel that I could ever be ever ever and God was so impressed by him that God gave him wealth beyond measure and it was because he wanted to be in service of others. Get it? So God will recognize that quality in you. And for those of you who want to tell me, well, Jesus wasn't wealthy. Oh, really? Jesus was born into a very wealthy family. His mother Mary had a brother, was Joseph of Arimathea. And he had ten mines. And he was very wealthy. And if you ever wondered where Jesus went from the time that he was 12 until the time of 30, Joseph of Arimathea got him and took him with him to the mines, to the tin mines, and he also shared the gospel there. They were very wealthy. It was Joseph of Arimathea who paid for those burying cloths that were that wrapped Jesus. So let's not get stinky here. That's not an excuse. If you're a believer, there's no excuse. Jesus doesn't want you poor. You can't do anything when you're poor. Why would he want you to be poor? 
The idea is every he he wants you to bring people to him and to in service. So why would someone look at you poor and say, "Gee, I want what he has." Come on now. So I'm going to leave you with this. I know each and every one of you are going to write this down. And I know each and every one of you are going to be manifesting funds, money, moolah, cash, beans, cha-ching, clams, dead presidents. You get it. We're going to coin those phrases. (laughs) I know each and every one of you are going to do that. Money comes easily. You are a magnet for money. Congratulations. And stop thinking of those words that are going to hold you back. Now we're going to go to this very special message and then we will close out. Hi everyone and thank you so much for stopping by this episode of Secrets Laws of Attraction. I'd like to take a minute and invite you over to our main website. That's www.psychicsecrets.com. That's www.psychicsecrets. There's two S's in the middle now. Psychicsecrets.com. You can find Secrets Laws of Attraction there. Also, you can find our Secrets Mystery Manor. That's really a lot of fun to listen to. And we talk about ghosts and paranormal and oddities and sometimes tragedies. But stop on over and you can listen to that as well. There on the website, you can find our blog and the many very experienced advisors that we have. You'll see me there. I'm Extension 11 and we're all glad to help you 24-7. You can chat, you can have a call, and you can even do a video call. And for first-time callers, we have a special, 30 minutes for $30. And you know, we can get a lot accomplished in 30 minutes. So stop on over, say hello, and we'll be glad to help you and give you the guidance and direction that you deserve. In the meantime, thank you again so much for stopping by Secrets, Laws of Attraction. I'm your host, Zelda Kelly, and happy manifesting. Bye for now. I want to thank you for being so brave heart, for being so blessed and so bold and so wonderful. And thank you so much for stopping in. I love you. You be well. You be well. Yeah, you too. <laughs> And I will see you the next time on Secrets, Laws of Attraction. I'm your host, with the most, Zelda Kelly. Bye for now, and happy manifesting. Bye-bye.